Hey, uh, Sar here. Today we're going to talk about various manga, anime, and merch that doesn't exist yet, but we're manifesting. So essentially, it's an announcement wish list. This is absolutely just an excuse to chat about various things I've been enjoying recently. So let's get started with new licenses of already licensed series. These are manga which already have English releases, but I'm crossing my fingers for a new version of. First is a potential hardcover or box set release for Blam by Suto Munihei. I recently picked up the first Master Edition volume of the six volume series, yeah six, and loved it so much that I want a definitive edition of it for my collection whether that be hardcovers or a box set like the Akira box set that was released recently. The Master Editions are large trim soft covers and they're pretty great already since large trim size is essential to appreciate Blam's gorgeous art. But since the series is a classic, I feel there is some possibility that it'll get a fancier release in the future, especially since the length is comparable to Akira's. Regarding Blam itself, just from Volume 1 alone, it's easily my favorite Nihei work out of the ones I've read so far, the others being Knights of Sidonia and Apo Sims. And if you enjoy post-apocalyptic landscapes, absolutely give Blam a shot. It even has a pinch of body horror, which I wasn't expecting, but was pleasantly surprised. Sorry, I've been coming off the end of a pretty bad uh, chest cold, so if there's any coughing, I'll try to edit it out of the video if I miss any. Just apologies in advance for that. Next. Although I've been hesitating to collect the series because it gets a touch risque at times, especially in later volumes where the protagonist's chest is out for pretty much an entire arc, a large hardcover trim release of Doro Hedoro might make me change my mind. The manga's great, the anime's great, Kyu Hayashida has been my favorite mangaka for the past couple years, so essentially perfect additions, sort of like the Berserk ones. Collecting the 23 volume series into omnibuses would be super tempting. I do own the hardcover art book for the series, and that trim size would be perfect. Just imagine a row of lovely hardcovers with cover texturing to feel like Kaiman's gator skin, which line up exactly with the official art book on the shelf in like a little row of Doro Hidoro content. Ah, it's a dream, honestly. This one's a little less likely since the singles are already a little special with French flaps and the series isn't as popular as it should be in the West yet, but a Hayashida fan can hope, can hope. Lastly for this section, where is our Hunter Hunter box set? Most of the major big shonen series have box sets to make collecting them easier like One Piece, Bleach, Naruto, Chainsaw Man, etc but we've never gotten one for Hunter x Hunter, despite the series having a pretty perfect cutoff point after the election arc. The first 32 volumes of the series would be prime for one or two box sets which cover the entirety of the anime and end with either a satisfying final chapter or an invitation to check out the current arcs depending on what the reader wants from their experience. I think people are sleeping on Hunter x Hunter a bit at the moment due to the hiatuses, which is understandable, but a box set release ending on chapter 340, Special Mission, might be just what the series needs to get back into the mainstream and encourage people to catch up. The probability of a box set release is decent, I'd say. Hunter x Hunter is super popular, and I think a lot of readers have some nostalgia for the earlier arcs, so if they just threw in like 
an exclusive poster or something, they would be they would be pretty persuaded to pick them up. Um, if you haven't read Hunter Hunter but want to check it out, the 2011 anime adaptation is an accessible entry point into the series since it's available on most major streaming services. Give it a couple episodes and just see what you think. Moving into the English physicals section, these are volumes that have physical releases in other languages, but I'm wishing for English licenses of. First up, the Law Light novel, which details Trafalgar Law's backstory from One Piece, already has physical releases in Japanese, Spanish, and French, so we're just waiting for it in English. I have been tempted to pick up either the Spanish or French editions to struggle through because I do know a bit of both languages, but since I've already read the fan translation of the entire novel, I'll probably just wait for its official announcement. The likelihood of this one is so high, I'd be surprised if it didn't happen soon since Law is a fan favorite character and super merchandisable slash profitable. I think there are a couple other light novels as well, one regarding some of the ladies I believe, but the only ones we have in English at the moment are the ace ones, which are actually getting their bochi manga adaptation licensed as well. Next up, another light novel, this one from Sakamoto Days being the first light novel for the series. This one contains some side stories of the characters on their days off, I believe, and it's a recent release coming out just last year in 2023. So it might be a while before we get it here, but I am hopeful since the JJK light novels were both translated eventually about two years from their JP publication dates. Hoping it's on the sooner side for this one though because the main story of Sakamoto Days is currently in a really serious arc and I could use some fluff of the characters just having fun and not potentially dying. Next, another volume I feel we should have gotten a while ago, Volume Zero of Hunter x Hunter, the prequel chapters outlining Karapika's memories. I actually consider Volume Zero a crucial part of canon because of the focus character of the recent arc, so I'd be surprised if it's not eventually translated, but it's been, what, 10 years at this point since the JP physical release? That's wild to think about. Speaking of Hunter x Hunter though, I also wouldn't mind picking up a copy of that one silver guidebook volume if it ever got translated. I'm aware the information in it isn't entirely accurate, but it looks cool and would be a nice collector's piece. On the list next is my fervent wish for a DVD slash a Blu-ray physical of season one of the Doro Hedoro anime. Netflix sucks at timely physical releases, so I don't know what behind the scenes content to jail red tape is going on there, but since season two of the anime was recently announced, my hopes are as high as ever. Because of the nature of the manga, the anime is simply a more accessible way to enjoy the series. It's a lot easier of an entry point and it's a strong recommendation. The synopsis is essentially morally gray but lovable best friends go on wacky adventures and live life to the fullest in the grungy and bizarre world they live in. Also, the anime has an amazing OST, perfect opening, and an array of fitting ending songs. Speaking of the OST, desperately hoping we get a CD release of the Doro Hedoro soundtrack as well. I actually lost hope for a while since the only Doro Hedoro CD previously was a super exclusive JP edition that sold out incredibly fast and is real pricey on the aftermarket. It's also pretty rare it doesn't appear 
on secondhand sites that often but just this March, we actually got a vinyl release in North America of all the songs on this cool Kaiman head black and green edition. I don't collect vinyls, but super happy it exists. Uh, hopefully it sells well and they decide to make a standard release CD eventually. Moving back into manga, next on the announcement wish list is a translation of the sapphic series the guy she was interested in wasn't a guy at all this one's a pretty cute blossoming romance between a girly chick and a shy punky type who plays guitar and dresses in baggy clothes which causes her to be mistaken for a guy sometimes the japanese physical for volume one dropped recently and i actually do own it it has this cool green accent color throughout making it Pretty unique on that front alone. Recently in English, we got the series The Invisible Man and His Soon-to-Be Wife, the which it did the same accent color thing with blue, so it'd be cool to have this one as well. There are translated scans of the series, but I actually haven't read them yet. Mm, maybe I'll just wait for the physical. No rush, no rush. Another sapphic series I'm hoping for a physical release of is Night and Sea, which is a beautifully drawn three volume series about a girl who enjoys swimming and another girl with a vampire-esque motif. This series does have a digital release already, but that's not really the same thing as a physical one. I'd classify this as very subtle shoujo eye and it's easily my favorite sapphic manga I've read in the past three years or so. It's very toned down and picturesque. A lot of the romantic aspects are implied, and the focus of the series is more on the coming of age aspect as the girls go through high school, but I actually appreciated the low-key tone. Definitely give it a read if you're in the market for a subtle sapphic manga with art reminiscent of Witch Hat Atelier and Jose the Tiger and the Fish. Also, if you have any shoujo eye slash sapphic recommendations for me, absolutely, absolutely drop them in the comments below. I'm always on the lookout for a good, wholesome story. Still not sure if I'm hoping for a manga or an anime announcement for this next series, so maybe I'll just say either, both. My favorite anime of all time is Girls Last Tour for the lovely post-apocalyptic atmosphere and that delicious existential dread, and the creator of that series' most recent work is Shimeji Simulation, which is very much in the same vein. It follows two girls who are friends, and possibly a little more, as they attend school in a post-apocalyptic slice-of-life series. I'm so far behind that I didn't realize the series was complete at five volumes, so I'll probably reread the entire thing sometime soon, but just adore so much about it. The magical realism of the series mixes with the dread-inducing wasteland setting to create such a unique reading experience. It's honestly pretty unmatched. I can't really think of another series that has this same atmosphere. If you liked Girls Us Tour, absolutely give it a shot. But that anime actually did numbers back in the day, so crossing my fingers for a license or anime of this one. And lastly, this one's on me for missing the pre-order window, absolutely my fault, but hoping for a re-release of the Arknights manga physicals. We didn't have official translations for the longest time, and even though the pre-orders have been shipped out, it's pretty much impossible to find the box set on the aftermarket, so it's a waiting game essentially at this point to see if Yostar is going to re-release them. While we're here though, I hope the other books will get English translations too, like the Kitchen spin-off series, which looks super cute. Next category is for releases in general. These are books which may not exist yet, 
at all, but we're hopefully willing into being by talking about them. First up, can we get a Delicious in Dungeon art book? I know there's a sort of guidebook for the series already, and I haven't managed to track down a copy to look at yet, but what I'm hoping for is a really thick, preferably hardcover art book collecting Ryoko Kui's world building and character design sketches and art for Dungeon Meshi. Her attention to detail and art is gorgeous. I especially appreciate her effort in fleshing out her world by drawing varied body types and facial features for the various fantasy races that live in it. Um, yeah, hopefully we get a Kui art book eventually, similar to the Tokyo Ghoul re-illustrations one if you own that. I'll put some footage of it on screen, but it essentially collects uh, Ishida's Tokyo Ghoul re-illustrations and it also contains some little snippets of commentary on each piece next to it, which is a lot of fun. Next art book wish is of a Pokemon Adventures art book primarily featuring old pieces from Mato. This one's definitely dipping into delusional territory since Mato hasn't drawn for the series in ages, but I'm hoping to either find an old JP release or bank on a nostalgic anniversary miracle announcement. If you're not familiar with the series, Pokemon Adventures is a manga which loosely adapts the events of the games. There's a couple volumes for pretty much every game at this point. The Scarlet and Violet continuation just recently started serializing actually. I took a brief look at some of the first scans and it actually kind of looks similar in concept to Yu-Gi-Oh! 5 Ds right now, which is pretty funny because there's uh, races on the Cyclizards and they already do kind of look like dual bikes. But getting back to the point, Mato was the manga artist for the first nine volumes of Pokemon Adventures. So basically she drew the manga adaptation for red, blue, and yellow, and the first two volumes of the gold and silver continuation. The original run is super nostalgic for me. It's basically what got me into manga back in the day. I remember reading it at my local library for hours and being so shocked at the plot twists. I actually reread the original 14 volumes last month until the end of Gold, Silver, and Crystal, and the shock factor doesn't quite hold up now that I'm older, but the art definitely still does. Her successor Yamamoto's work is good too, but it's a touch angular. It doesn't quite have the same squishy nostalgic touch for me. You really can't beat the fat Pikachus that Mato drew. Honestly, my best bet for this one is using a proxy to order an old Japanese art book, I think. There are a couple ones that never made it to the US from back in the day. The recent 20th anniversary Pokemon Adventures art book that was released in English as well was all Yamamoto and that does make sense since he's done mm, more than 40 volumes at this point. Impressive, impressive in its own right. The next item is a general wish for more English announcements from the Seinen magazine Harta. Recently, I did a fun experiment ordering a variety of manga magazines and looking through them, and of the 10 or so I flipped through, Harto was easily the most impressive for me personally. It's roughly a monthly magazine which features beautiful original commissioned artwork from a new artist every month on the cover. And you can just tell so much love is put into the publication because they pay the artist to draw an entirely separate matching piece for the table of contents page, which is, yeah, that's just next level. The paper quality of the covers is great as well compared to the usual like phone book paper standard of your typical manga magazine. And basically every single series on the inside was beautifully illustrated. 
Arta is the magazine Delicious in Dungeon ran in, and flipping through, I spotted tons of unfamiliar works with stunning line art. I'm deeply intrigued by some of these manga and hope to see them one day in English. And lastly, this one's a general point, but I hope going forward we get more cover variants and bonus editions for English releases. This one's a bit dangerous for wallets, but variant covers and inclusions are so much fun. While shopping for Sakamoto merch the other day, I stumbled across the Korean collector's editions and each volume comes with its own slipcase and assortment of merch. That's definitely a little overkill for your average series, especially if you don't want to pay $40 a volume because of the bonuses. But for example, some JP editions of the Sakamoto volumes come shrink wrapped with a postcard print of a color page from the original issues of that volume and that sounds ideal to me. I think I've seen some manga with purchase bonuses recently like Kino Kunia's special edition of Dinosaur Sanctuary so they're not non-existent in English. Variant covers are also so cool. They're my favorite part of Western comics. And for an example, in manga publishing, the new omnibus editions of Initial D have three different cover variants based on where you purchase it. I totally get if multiple versions of a volume sounds painful to completionist collectors, but it'd be nice to have options, I think. Also, an occasional sticker or mini print from a favorite series couldn't hurt. Next category is anime announcements. These are a series I'm looking forward to an animated adaptation of. First up, Sakamoto Days. This one's no surprise since the entire fan base has been screaming for an anime adaptation of it for years now, but for a good reason. Sakamoto Days is a beautifully drawn battle shonen series with extremely cinematic fight scenes and the day it's animated is the day it explodes in popularity. That said, I can guess why we haven't had an anime announcement for the series yet, and that's the mangaka likely has sky-high expectations. He is a massive, massive movie fan, and when I say that I mean if you've watched JoJo's and know the relationship Araki, the creator, has with the character Rohan. Well, Suzuki's Rohan character looks like this. Even without that crystal clear signpost, it only takes a couple chapters to realize this dude is a massive movie buff. He's inspired by Otomo, the creator of works like Akira and Domu, who had cinematic influences himself and the fingerprints of blockbuster action movies are all over Sakamoto days. I wouldn't be surprised if Suzuki was deeply involved in the adaptation process of Sakamoto, working closely with whichever studio wins the bid eventually. And I'm absolutely willing to wait longer if that means the anime is going to be high budget and butter smooth because the series absolutely deserves the effort. Next up, maybe this is a little greedy since Doro Hedoro isn't fully adapted yet, but I'm hoping for an eventual Die Dark anime announcement. Die Dark is Q Hayashida's currently serializing series, and there's six to seven volumes out now physically depending on JP or English releases, which is enough content for a 12 episode season. It's also my current favorite manga and I take every opportunity possible to recommend it, so an accessible anime version would be amazing to get more friends into it. If you need me to pitch Die Dark to you, the story follows a young boy who's been hunted since childhood for his cursed body as he accumulates a ragtag group of close friends. Friendship is a major theme of Die Dark, just as it was in Dorohedoro, 
and not in an optimistic bright way like in one piece but more in a wow a strong bond has the power to get you through otherwise miserable circumstances way which really resonates with me Mind you, there is some space horror and gore, but because of Hayashida's trademark goofy writing style, nothing ever really gets too heavy. It's all really enjoyable and a lot of fun. If you liked Doro Hidoro, you'll probably love this since they have the exact same core message. And if Doro Hidoro wasn't for you, still maybe give this one a shot. The fan service and quirkiness is actually toned down a tad so far and it's pretty great seven seas did an adorable four volume box at release too which i picked up recently and do recommend it's really cute and comes with an exclusive poster where the bros look like they're starting a band or something absolutely hilarious <clears throat> another unlikely one need a your turn to die anime adaptation asap not based on the manga, which is terrible, but based on the original game. Your Turn to Die is an adventure death game visual novel, essentially similar to Danganronpa and Zero Escape. So it might be tough adapting it into an anime, but I have faith it can be done with enough supervision from the creator since indie horror games have been adapted into anime before. The game is split into three chapters and I think the first two could be adapted into one or two seasons with the third and final chapter being a bit longer. Your Turn to Die is another series I talk about in literally every video since it's my favorite game of all time. Not because it's the best game of all time, mind you. Um, just because it means a lot to me personally but an anime adaptation would spawn a whole bunch of merch and make the series more accessible um, if the game interests you it's available on steam and i'll link it below i'm also crossing my fingers for a physical switch port of the game once it's complete but we'll just have to wait and see on that one just last year, this anime announcement wishlist would have been a lot longer, but we've gotten a slew of great announcements recently actually. Dora Hidoro Season 2, the Rize movie essentially being Season 2 for Chainsaw Man, the new One Piece Word adaptation which I'm praying has good pacing so I can finally recommend a non-intimidating form of One Piece to friends. Even JJK Season 3, which we weren't expecting to hear about for a while, was announced shortly after the finale of Season 2. I am a touch worried about that last one since MAPPA seems to be overworking their employees to a worrying degree. I'm still on the fence feelings wise about JJK season 2, but in general I hope MAPPA fixes their internal issues before it leads to something more serious than animators posting news pictures on social media. As for continuations, already looking forward to the next season of The Apothecary Diaries, which is a surprisingly well animated and easy to watch series I binged recently. The first season consists of 24 episodes and it's super charming while touching on some harsh realities without ever getting too heavy. If you like palace politics and romances where the guy falls in love first, give this one a shake. Season 2 just got greenlit yesterday as of recording actually and it's scheduled to come out next year in 2025. Um, was gonna talk about dream merch next, like non-book items, but this video is already way too long and talking so much has really exacerbated my coughing. So we'll save that for another day. If you have any dream announcements or series you've been enjoying recently, absolutely drop a comment below. Always love recommendations. Other than that, thanks for watching. See you next video.